Investigators examine the trash container and find that the top is burned away. But the trash chute and the container behind and below the sink is intact. Inside the container are remnants of paper, scorched but not burned. The fire couldn't have started here. With the most obvious potential causes discounted, investigators begin to comb through the wreckage looking for what had started the fire. Studying the history of the plane, Hill uncovers some startling facts. In the year before the accident, 76 separate maintenance issues had been written up by various flight crews. Workers had dealt with them all quickly, but still, it's an unusually high number of problems. The plane's troubled history doesn't end there. Four years earlier, the entire tail cone of the plane had blown off. The crew had to make an emergency landing. The plane was repaired and put back into service. But Hill focuses on the wires that had to be stitched together after the accident. A bad repair job could have been the cause of the fire. There were wires that ran through there that had been cut, spliced back together. Investigators study all the splices they can find that weren't destroyed in the fire. But they find no evidence of arcing or short-circuiting. It's another dead end. They turn their attention to the cockpit voice recorder and the popping circuit breakers. What was that? It's right there, I see it. Right there. Yeah. Like a machine gun. Yeah. Zap, zap, zap. The circuit breakers trip as a precaution. When they begin to overheat, the circuit breakers turn off, cutting electrical current to the toilet's flush motor. It's a safety feature so the motor will not cause a fire. Pops as I push it. Investigators need to know if the breakers were tripped by a fire that had already started, or was the motor itself the problem? The NTSB build a mock-up of the plane's washroom and force the flush motor to seize. They want to see if it could have started the fire. The seized motor reaches a temperature of 428 degrees Celsius. It's hot, but it's not enough to ignite parts of the washroom around the motor. The fire started somewhere else. In spite of countless hours of investigation and numerous tests, in the end, the NTSB cannot pinpoint the exact cause of the fire. There is simply not enough evidence. <laughs> Even if they'll never know the exact cause of the fire, investigators try to understand how it could cause so much damage. There had been heat and smoke, but no one had seen any flames until an explosion ripped through the jet. <laughs> Uh, when you have a fire that has incomplete combustion, when, when it has a lack of oxygen, they will produce combustible gases. Those gases then can collect, especially in the crown of an aircraft. The fire had burned out of sight behind the washroom walls, and the smoke, hot gases and fumes intensified and spread inside the wall space from the washroom through to the cabin walls. Those spaces acted as a sort of chimney for the gases and smoke that the fire was creating. Although the fire remained concealed behind the walls and ceiling panels, the smoke and hot gases entered the cabin through every seam, gathering in the upper space in the cabin and pressing down on the passengers. When the doors were opened during the evacuation, an unlimited supply of oxygen was suddenly available to feed the fire. The more intense the heat, the more oxygen-hungry a fire becomes. The gas is ignited with the force of an explosion. 
once you have a flashover, you produce heat, toxic gases, and you burn up all the oxygen in the cabin, and it becomes non-survivable. The technical part of the investigation wraps up. But there are still a lot of questions about how the crew responded to the fire. Uh, the first off is that it's starting to clear now. And at that point, I reckon that the fire was under control. Could they have done more to prevent the tragedy on board Flight 797? In 1983, a washroom fire on an Air Canada DC-9 filled the plane's cabin with smoke. The crew struggled to land the plane, but a flash fire ripped through the jet moments after it touched down. Twenty-three people were killed. There was a fireman towering at us. I think the quote was, she could blow at any minute. NTSB investigators are unable to pinpoint the cause of the fire. But after reviewing all the information they have, they're ready to release the report. It is published a year after the accident. It's a landmark in aircraft safety. But it immediately makes for controversial headlines. The NTSB points out that the source of the smoke was never identified either by the flight attendants or the first officer. The captain was never told, nor did he inquire as to the precise location and extent of the fire which had been reported to him. And with that in mind, what type of fire uh, did you believe that you had? The bin fire. The report and the media attention it gets are devastating to Captain Cameron and his crew. Soon after the report is released, there is an outcry among pilots in the industry. They resent its implied criticism of Flight 797's crew and the suggestion that they could have begun their descent five minutes sooner. Several months later, the Airline Pilots Association submits a petition that defends Cameron and the crew. It makes an impact. The NTSB released a revised report, including the petition by the Airline Pilots Association. In the petition, First Officer We Met writes an impassioned defense of landing the plane where and when they did. The issue wasn't only the distance to the nearest airport, but the required rate of descent. As it was, the plane barely made the descent to the Greater Cincinnati Airport. Still, the National Transportation Safety Board's revised summary doesn't pull all its punches, pointing a finger at Captain Cameron. The report reads that the time taken to evaluate the nature of the fire and to decide to initiate an emergency descent contributed to the severity of the accident. Twenty years later, the statement still stings. I, I'm glad they were all, the people that got off, got off. I'm very sorry that the people that didn't get off, didn't get off because we spent a lot of time and effort getting them there. That really bothered me. All I know is that I did the best I could. Along with the comments on the performance of the crew, the NTSB recommends a host of safety improvements. Perhaps if the flight had been full, someone would have noticed the smell of the smoke sooner. But what the washroom of Flight 797 could have used was a smoke detector. They weren't standard throughout the industry, but after Flight 797, attitudes and laws changed. Even though flight attendants did receive some training in dealing with fires aboard a plane, it didn't go far enough. But what was more obvious, the flight attendants weren't properly equipped to attack fires. Without full face masks and oxygen, they couldn't be expected to fight fire while holding their breath.